Hello everyone, this is a video tutorial on how to merge different pictures together if you want to get just certain slices of an image showing, not the whole image, um, that you can use for your passage of time project, your current project. So what I've got is, um, we have Autodesk Sketchbook open right here, and <clears throat> excuse me, if you look at the right, we've got um, our layers here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, five images that I've imported already from my import button right here, import photos, and it dropped it right in. And I know that I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing with these because they're not exactly, if you look at this, this one, for instance, this one is a, in a different position than this glass of milk right here. So um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of sizing, I think, with that one, but we'll see. It could be pretty interesting. Um, so I'm going to start with this one, and there's no delete button up here. So what we have to do is we have to just select the area that we want to get rid of. Um, so you can actually do this two different ways. Let me show you one way. Um, one way is to actually delete the, um, the picture, um, the part of the picture that you don't want to show. Um, I think for this project, that would be the easiest thing to do just because we're talking about just a handful of layers. Um, and it's okay if we, if we need to get that information back, we could always um, re-import the, the picture. So if I click on the, on the layer, I do have some options here. I don't want to delete the layer because it's going to get rid of, rid of everything, but um, I can cut it. That would get rid of it. And I can also clear. So I'm going to hit clear. And that actually gets rid of um, that part that I had selected. And it's showing the layer underneath that layer. So you notice that um, my photos don't really line up um, 100%. So what I have to do here is I got to make this picture that's showing underneath, I got to make that a little bit larger. So I can go over to this button right here and that's going to transform. And I can do a couple of things. Um, this one here is nudge, which um, I could start with nudge and I can tap using my finger or stylus to kind of move the top of this glass up. I can do that a little bit. Takes a while. Oh, maybe because I don't have the right layer selected. I don't. I don't have the right layer selected. Look at that. Um, so I'm going to nudge that up again. Let's see. And I'll go here. There we go. So that glass is actually lined up on the top, but it's not lined up on the bottom. So what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to transform this thing um, using, oops, I don't want to do that, um, using the distort. And I want to be careful when you're doing this because it can get wacky very quickly. Okay. You can actually do this instead of using the, um, the nudge if you want to. And you want to just do this until it looks accurate. And I think it's okay if this thing doesn't look 100% on the money, but that looks pretty good. So we've got uh, this right hand side now transitioning over to the left image. And this is lined up pretty well. This is lined up pretty well. Um, even though it looks a little bit off on the top here, that's a little wacky, but I'm satisfied with that. So I'm going to hit done. And now I'm going to go back to this selection tool and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slice a little bit away from that second picture that I've got, maybe something like that. I'm going to click on it with my finger and I'm going to do clear. There we go. Um, wow, that that uh, third picture there is way off. So 
So I'm going to have to go back and distort that too. So I'm going to click on the third picture. I'm going to go to my distort and I'm going to make that line up with the bottom of this glass. And I don't want to just make it tall. I also want to make it wider as well. Okay. Got to remember to do that if you are distorting your image. Okay. That goes up there. Uh, I think it needs to be a little bit wider. That's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. Again, I don't think you should be too, too concerned about getting this thing laser accurate. I think some of the nice qualities of this could be that it's slightly off and that you can see a real distinction of where each of these images starts and stops. Um, so, wow, there's a big jump between that one and that one. Okay, I wish I had done that differently. Okay. Well, that's all right. Trial and error. I'm going to now select this guy. I'm going to try to make the selections even between um, the slices even. Um, so I'm going to click on this and to do clear. Okay, this one's not as off as the other ones, which is good. Uh, but I'm going to go back to this guy, the distort. Bring that down, bring that down. And bottom looks almost right. Okay, done. And let's see, we have one more picture. Yes, we have one more picture to do. So I'm going to, oops, I don't want to do that. I want to select and I'll grab that and click on the layer and clear. And ooh, that one's off. Okay. So, you know, now that I'm thinking of it, this could be kind of neat too if you wanted to show like little steps of the glass. If they were not lined up at all, that could be kind of neat too. Um, but that's another idea for another day. Um, so, I'm going to. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Okay. Line this guy up. Um, oops. Let's see, I'm on that layer. I'm going to transform. Um, I don't have a selection yet, that's why it's not working. Okay. Um, I think what I want to do first is nudge this guy down. I think it just needs to be moved down. Um, so I'm going to go back to this guy, actually this nudge and then move that down. And it's okay that, um, my, the top of my image is not really lining up all that well. Um, the very top, like right up here, you can see there's like a white gap and there's like this little weird section here, um, that's not lined up. I'm probably going to crop this afterwards. So that doesn't matter as much to me. I'm going to move this over. Some more, move this down. Okay. Almost there. Come on. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit, just so I have the same. Kind of interesting the seeing what the um different colors are, that are, uh, are showing up here. Pretty interesting. Um, I like the roundedness of this. This is looking a little flat on top, which is too bad, um, but it's kind of interesting. Um, so there is my image. If I wanted to clean this up, I could do a couple of things. I think the simplest thing to do would be to create a new layer, bring that to the top, and then, um, make a selection here and then, oops, I want to do that again. Make a selection, make a selection here 
And I'm going to crop out the stuff I don't think is all that necessary. This, I think this um, board back here is a little distracting. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep the bananas. I think that's kind of neat what's happening with the bananas back there. Um, I, I might not need all of this negative space over here. Um, but I have this new layer I've created. I've got a selection. I'm just going to fill that in with white. So I go up to the paint bucket here, click on that, and then I fill it. And I've got white in the puck here. And that's going to fill in with white. So that is better, I think, better composition. Um, and I think it probably, this image uh, probably does need to get cropped in a little bit on the right hand side. Um, right now, this, this glass is kind of in the middle, and I want it to be more towards one of the, the, uh, the vertical thirds lines. The rule of thirds. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to come in like that. And I'm going to create another new layer, fill that with white. That's better. It feels better. It feels more balanced, um, visually balanced, that is. So I'm going to deselect that. Deselect. Okay. And that is that is pretty much it. So I can now go here, I can go to share, and I can do save image. What does that do? That didn't do anything. Let's go to share, save image. It may have already saved it to my gallery. Let's see if it saved it to my gallery. Let's see, go to gallery. Oh, save current sketch, okay. So that's another way to do it too. Um, so here's some of the other things. Do I love using Sketchbook? Of course I do. Um, oh, jeez. Yes. Okay. Great. We're not going to write a review. Um, here's some of the other things I've been working on. But uh, here is what we just created right here. Um, so that just saved it. So if I want to share it, I'm going to go here. And you can put it into drive if you want to. You can, yeah, add to shared album, add to save to files, you could do that. Um, that sort of thing. So we can do more. You could uh, email to yourself, you could put it into drive, that sort of thing. All right, so that is, that is one way to do it. Um, another way is to simply just take your pictures into um, sketchbook and then just make the, we're going to make the, uh, actually make a new file here, new sketch. So if you make a new sketch, if you're starting from scratch um, and you wanted to make this really wide, here's where you do that. You just make, I would say for this, if we want to make, um, if you want to show all of your pictures horizontally, what you do here is you can just triple, double or triple the number here. So it's a 3,000, it'd be 6,000 or 9,000, depending on how many pictures you have. The height is probably fine. Um, you can always reduce the, um, the amount, I believe. Um, and you can go to presets too. We'll see what that is. So these are just sort of factory determined sizes right here. But you can always change the the size, the screen size. So if it's 6,000 and I hit create, it's going to be, and I'm, I'm zooming out here. So that's more of a, you know, landscape versus a square um, or a portrait. So you can bring in more photos now. So if I want to go up here, I'm going to bring in uh, two, two glasses of milk here. I'm going to bring in that one. Okay. So I could bring that one in and then move it over here. I could make this, uh, I could make that much smaller. I could go, whoa. You can go a lot smaller than that if you wanted to. You gotta be careful not to distort it too much. That is distorted a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I think the better way to do that, okay, let me try that again. I'm gonna 
a better way. Oops, I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to undo what I just did there. Okay, I'm going to redo that. A um, better way to, um, to transform is actually I'm going to go here. So if you just want to make this thing smaller, better way to do it is just use these guys. Um, you still have to be careful, though, that you're not distorting it too much. And then I can rotate it. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that is a much smaller image. I obviously don't need the, the height that I have here, but um, that, that way you can get, you know, you could get probably four images across here, and then we can crop down the, uh, the height that we don't need. This is not perfectly square, but um, it works for this project. Um, if you really wanted to get it square, you could add a white box on top of this and down the bottom, top and the bottom there, and you could kind of square it up. So those are a few techniques if you wanted to show slices of an image and also if you wanted to bring in multiple images that have white space around them. Um, so hope that was helpful for you. Um, I'm just going to show you one last thing here. I'm going to duplicate this and then oops, move this guy. Move it over here. Okay. In order to move things, you do have to go to this guy right up here. And you don't have to click on anything. Once you're there, you can just, as long as the layer that you have selected is the one you want, then you can move that around. So that's how, oh, these are obviously the same image, but this is how you can show um, images with a little bit of white space around them in the same document. Okay, hope that was helpful for you, and I can't wait to see what you create.